Well, hello, I am Mozart, or Dr. Mozart, if you will. And I'm here with Dr. Divakant Misra of India. He's going to speak to, to us a little bit about uh, ophthalmic innovation. Uh, but first, I have a key question for him. So, Divakant, uh, can you tell me, you know, if Mozart were an eye surgeon today instead of a musician, you know, what revolutionary tools do you think he would be using? First of all, thank you, Matt, for giving the invitation and having me here. It's great to be here in Vienna, land of Mozart. So to start with, uh, you know I'm associated with the Young Ophthalmic Society of India. Right. So, and one key point is that Mozart started really early. He did. He was, I think it was five or six when he composed first. So imagine having Mozart as an ophthalmologist, as an ambassador for the Young Ophthalmologist. So that mm. would be a great thing. Mm. And I believe the youngsters, the young ophthalmologists are the key to you know, new innovations, new things. So I'm sure Mozart would be having that young approach towards everything. Mm. And another thing, a very casual thing, but I'm sure he won't be needing any anesthesia. Okay. He will be going for, as we say, LA under local anesthesia or GA under general anesthesia. It will be musical anesthesia. Hmm. With his, I mean, his musical approach, with his soothing music, he's, he'll calm his patients and certain simple procedures like cataract will go without anesthesia. So That's interesting. Now, yeah. is, that, is that helpful in, in surgery, do you think, sometimes going definitely, without anesthesia? Definitely. More than the patients, I believe it's the surgeon that needs this kind of... Uh, yeah. Interestingly, they had a study where they had used uh, Mozart's composition hmm. and they found that uh, Though the surgical results were not better as such, but they were not, there were no complications, no side effects in that group, that wow. patient. So it, it's, it's and, a, and you said they were using a composition. Can yeah, you explain yeah. a little bit more? Uh, I'm not sure which exact music that they were using, but it is more like uh, the Mozart's music was playing in the OR at that time. I see. So the, probably it helps the surgeon to calm his nerves and all. So that, that, that is a key thing here, I think. Now, the funny thing is I've heard that uh, when retina surgeons perform surgery, whether it's retinal surgery or even sometimes cataract surgery, right. uh, it's a very pristine surgery, uh, a lot of steps and care is taken, and it's in some ways a bit of a symphony. Whereas okay. cataract surgeons, when they're operating, uh, they might operate a little bit more to, to rock and roll and do things a bit is quickly it? and whatnot. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you have any comment on that. I, I beg to differ. I think oh, it's, okay. it's, it's the other way around. Yeah. Because cataract is, it goes as per plan most of the times. But retina surgery, you really don't know what's going to happen. You, you, you're going to tear your retina. Or, and there's certain amount of tension because once a cataract surgery goes back, the VR person is there to take care of. But mm. once a VR surgery goes back, goes bad, there's nobody to take care, care of. Mm. So I think it's more like, you know, more rock and roll with the VR people. Okay. Yeah. Hey, well, Mozart can do uh, rock and roll. Rock and roll. <laughs> right, right. So uh, tell me a little bit about maybe some tools also. Uh, do you see innovations here at Uretsina on the show floor, things that maybe Mozart would use if he were living today? I think one of the most interesting things, though it has been here for a while, I've seen the 3D visualization system. Mm. So that by is Alcon. the. Yeah, by Alcon. And uh, it has been incorporated into VR quite beautifully now. Mm. A lot of people are doing surgeries based on that system. So I think that will be uh, the thing of uh, future. And uh, probably more of robotics coming into it. The AI, a lot of talks on artificial intelligence, deep learning, a lot of those. So probably uh, we'll have to shift to music. Hmm. Uh, doctors are going obsolete. <laughs> AI is taking over. So right. we, sh we should have alternate careers now, maybe. Very interesting. Well. Um, you mentioned robotics and 3D visualization. Right. Um, we haven't yet come to the period where you're using robotics with 3D visualization, but I right. suppose um, both visualizing things and then performing the actual surgery, that's all got to be moving into the future. Exactly. Point, right? I'm sure all of these technologies will definitely integrate at some point of time. Yeah. Like we have the intraoperative OCT, we have the 3D visualization system. We are doing uh, ILM peeling with the help of robotics. So all of these into one, I'm sure it will be a great combination. And as I said, surgeons may be obsolete one day. Sure. Yeah. Well, in, <laughs> sure. Are, are you hoping for that? <laughs> no, in your I'm lifetime? not. I'm not in my <laughs> lifetime, at least. But yeah, it's pretty soon. It's. It's. I think we'll have more predictable results. Right. And uh, it's. It's better for the patient. We have to think about that. That has to be the priority. 
So, you know, in the uh, anterior segment, we're still looking at a lot of consumables, things like right. IOLs. Right, right. Um, do you think that there's going to be a move into the posterior segment with more devices, things that right, might right. help beyond the anti-VEGFs? Right. Future? With the implants, the retinal implants per se, like the Argus implant that we are talking about these days. Oh, yeah. So they are coming in, they're coming in fast. And uh, they are the thing of the future. And uh, for patients like retinitis pigmentosa and other degenerations, we can really give them some vision. They can, people are being able to walk around, identify stuff. And so with the advancement in technology, I'm sure they'll have a, a better use than now. Yeah. yeah. And what do you think about the future? I mean, we use this term in the industry now, KOL, key opinion leader. Uh, which, which often denotes someone older and perhaps well-respected, but is there a, a way for young people to be KOLs from the get-go and, and drive innovation right now? Definitely, that's the way to go ahead, I believe. As I said, I've been involved with the Young Ophthalmic Society and we have started a lot of new projects and a lot of people are coming in pitching and new ideas. So that is uh, the key because I'm not saying that, uh, of course, the older people have the uh, imp uh, the key thing is experience, they have the experience. But younger people coming with new ideas and just a new perspective to all mm. the things. And it's, at the end, it's all about innovation. Mm. So new ideas are driven by, new uh, innovation is driven by new ideas. So that is, and I think young people can, can really help there. There is a difference though in terminology between let's say innovation and right. invention. Right. Invention perhaps being, it's, it's you know, something, if not completely new, but still, um, you know, done by inventors, for right, example, right, you know, so right. um, do you think that, uh, you know, there's there's room for both innovation and invention in the field? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. They, I, I think they have to go hand in hand. Yeah. Innovations and uh, totally new technologies, and then maybe younger or older people, whoever, improvising on those technologies right. and making them uh, more suited for our patients, I believe. Right. That, that. Well, Dr. Divikant, thanks so much for coming to us. Thanks, From India, Matt. all yeah. the way here in yeah, Vienna. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks.